Hello everyone, I'm Douglas E. Welch. Welcome back to an episode of In the Garden for a Gardener's Notebook. For more information about a gardener's notebook and everything else that I do, please visit douglaseewelch.com. You'll find a link down there at the bottom of the screen. Well, it's been a while since I've been able to get in the garden. <laughs> I've been doing little small things, a little watering here and there, but nothing real big. We, it's the middle of the college and high school semester and that's our busiest time here at the Welch household. So. Things have been a little on hold lately, but today is such a gorgeous day, I wanted to get out, do a little bit in the garden and share that with you today. First thing first is, uh, I'm going to do something a little odd here, but I'm just going to refurbish this pot uh, of this geranium, and this is that, uh, if you've been watching the show for a while, you know this geranium is about 18 years old. This was a housewarming present when we moved in here. Uh, each year I just like to very quickly go through, um, take some of the leaf litter off the top. We have a big elm tree here, and of course that drops everything in here. Just kind of check up on it, make sure there's no uh, dead parts to it, um, and also see if it needs a little refilling. It doesn't actually need a lot of new soil. Uh, what I did do is I brought my, my worm castings bag out. Um, these are the uh, uh, worm poo, if you like, for lack of a better word, and it's very high in nutrients and good for the soil. And so what I'm just going to do with that is I'm just going to take a few handfuls of that, add to the top of this pot just to give it a little nutrition, and also it's good for holding in moisture. Uh, we are approaching that time of year here in Southern California when the heat is going to jump. We've already had, oh, about 90 degree day out there. And so preparing this pot for the onslaught of those temperatures is very important. Pots, of course, dry out a lot more quickly because they're a lot more exposed to not just the sunlight themselves, but also the air moving by the pot will dry it out. Now this is a plastic pot, so it helps a little bit. It doesn't uh, lose as much through evaporation, but with any clay pots, they can lose a lot of water uh, in a very short period of time. In fact, you'll actually notice scales start to form on the outside of the pots, showing you exactly where that evaporation is happening. So that's pretty much it. We're gonna add some worm casting to this. Uh, I decided not to take it down off the house uh, to work on it, because I could get right up on it. Uh, typically, it might be a little bit easier if you set this on the ground and do this on the ground, but in this case, it worked out fine. Now, uh, another few minutes here, and it's on to some other jobs. And here, checking in on our potatoes and etc. bed. Uh, you see the society garlic is going gangbusters in the front. That's really a decorative, although you can use it for culinary purposes. It's flowering very nicely. I've seen people put those flowers in salads and stuff. We might actually try that. Uh, the big success here are the potatoes. You can see here, here, here. Uh, the potatoes are just going crazy in this bed. We're going to hill those up a little bit, add a little more soil to those, but we're really happy to see that. Uh, you can see the lavender in this little cages. I think at this point, we're ready. We're going to pull the cages off. They're well established enough now. They're going to be fine on their own, even with the animals digging here. So um, we'll be able to use those little cages uh, for whatever new thing we plant in other areas of the garden. And here you can see the sweet potatoes that looked very, very small just a week or so ago, or whenever I did the last video, are already starting to throw off plenty of new growth. We got three of them, four of them showing, now five of them showing, I see, actually. So soon this bed will be covered with vines, just like the one in the back there, and the one in the back will soon be ready for harvest as well. So here we are in the onion bed, just taking a few minutes here uh, to do some weeding. Uh, we had that rain a few weeks ago, and of course the grass has exploded. These onions are looking really good. They're looking much larger this year. There's fewer of them, which is probably why there's larger ones. We probably overplanted last year. But I'm just going through and pulling out some of the grass. There's also this native, uh, actually somewhat native dayflower that's growing. Don't mind it along the edges here, uh, but don't want it growing in the middle and competing with the onions. So thankfully, it's pretty easy to get it out, as is with the grass. This bed is pretty well prepared over the last couple years here now. So the big trick here is not to pull out the onions while you're uh, trying to do the weeding. Of course, that's always the case with your weeding and why young children aren't always the best ones to do your weeding with you because they sometimes have little trouble to start discovering or deciding what is a plant and what is a weed. So, uh, so this will take another oh, 10, 15 minutes probably. Again, just a quick job you can do in the garden uh, at any time of day. Just so happens I'm out here filming, so it's a great time to catch up on it. So in here, we've got one of our containers has actually been empty for a little while. We harvested the last of the carrots out of here a few weeks ago, and again, I haven't really had time to get in here and really mix things up really well. Take all the elm seedlings out of here. They do pop up everywhere. Um, so what I'm going to do in here, just going to put on my gloves here in a minute and turn this over. Let's do that real quick. Um, 
But the side of what I'm going to do in here is I'm going to put carrots back in here again, but carrots take a long time to grow. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to plant a shorter growing crop kind of on top of them. Let's turn this all over here. Um, and that's going to be green onions. I've tried growing green onions in the ground here. It hasn't done very well. Um, so I'm hoping that by doing here the pot uh, will get them. They'll come up. We'll get some scallions for our meals. A little piece of pottery from the bottom of the pot. Uh, get some scallions out of here for our salads and stuff and for meals. And then the carrots will come up after we've taken those out. Uh, had some issues with watering in these containers. This timer on this circuit has failed on me. Uh, I need to get a new one in here, but I've been running it manually and this pot's looking nice and moist, so that's good. So all we're going to do is we're going to start off with the carrots here. We're just going to broadcast the carrots just like we did before. And uh, that's the last of that pack. And then interspersed with that, I'm going to put in some green onions and we'll let those grow up. I could have a little, actually, I'm going to empty that container too. Time to get new seeds. These are somewhat old anyway. Now, uh, what we're going to do then is just quickly get some worm uh, castings and top that with worm castings and then water it in to seat those soils, uh, seat those seeds down in there and we should be good to go and hopefully in a little while we'll see some carrots and green onions start to sprout up in this pot. And that's it for this episode of In the Garden for a Gardener's Notebook. Hope you've enjoyed it. Please send along your comments on either the blog or the Facebook page, the Google Plus page, or via Twitter. Tell me what's going on in your garden. I'd love to hear. For more information, you can visit the website, douglasewelch.com. There you'll find links to a gardener's notebook as well as everything else that I do, including technology IQ, careers in new media, career opportunities, and more. Hope to see you there soon. Until next time, keep digging.